Hi everyone and welcome to video number 18 on Henry VIII and his chief ministers. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about Cromwell's reforms, the changes that he brought in when he was, in effect, King Henry's chief minister. Now, I showed you this a few videos ago, some of the jobs that Cromwell had. Particularly, we've already had a look at the, how he had to arrange Henry's marriages. In this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a look at this one here. What changes, what reforms did he bring in which helped to increase Henry's power? What did he do to try and stop the opposition? So there's some of the things that we'll have a look at in this video. Now, changes. What is he changing? Well, this video examines some of the main ones. People say, ladies and gentlemen, that there are two certainties in life, and they are taxes and death. So if you want to put that in a more poetic way, you could say that there are two things in life, the tax man and the axe man. And in this video, we'll have a look at some of those. Now, first thing where Cromwell starts to change things is to do with crime and justice. Henry VIII was not a monarch to be messed with. Over 50,000 people were executed during his reign. Oh, he was a tough guy. But there were some places where you could run and hide and get protection from Henry and his justice. Churches, for example, were safe. You could go to a church and claim sanctuary. Certain parts of the country known as liberties. There, the local lord had the power, not the king's men. The lord was in charge of arresting. So there were ways where you could try and avoid the power of King Henry VIII. Well, Henry wouldn't like that, so Cromwell had the job of doing something about it. Cromwell's answers? Simple. 1536, Cromwell gets Parliament to get rid of all the liberties, all of these areas where the Lord's men were in charge. Instead, it would be the King's men. 1540, four years later, Cromwell gets Parliament to stop sanctuary for certain serious crimes, such as murder, for example. So Cromwell here, we see, is establishing the power, the control of Henry. Crime and justice, the first area. Second area, the Royal Council. Now, throughout uh, the last 50, 100 or so years of English history, the Royal Council had an important job. It was to advise the king to help in the day-to-day -day running of the country. But this system had several drawbacks or problems. It was not working effectively. Why was that? Well, the Royal Council had as many as 100 members not everybody used to attend. It was disorganised. There would be a lack of official recording of the notes, the debates, the discussions, the decisions. The Royal Council, if no one is attending, could be dominated by a few people or just one person, Wolsey or Cromwell, for example. So the Royal Council was not working. Cromwell has to come up with another answer. What does he do? Well, he sets up and concentrates power not in the Royal Council of a hundred members, but in the Privy Council, which only had about 20 members. And many of these members were lawyers or experts in administration. They weren't just nobility who were born to the job and therefore untrained. Cromwell also sets up the clerk to write down the notes. He's formalising everything. He's organising everything. He's making everything more efficient. Another change by Cromwell. 
I've already hinted at Henry and his power. The third area of change by Cromwell. He's got to try to increase royal power. First of all, in other countries, Ireland. Now, England had been over in Ireland for a couple of centuries by now. But Cromwell and King Henry feared that it could be quite lawless and therefore to try to establish law, they had to rely on the Anglo-Irish lords to help ensure control for Henry. But in Ireland, control, royal control, was only really in a little area in Dublin and just around outside it called the Pale, the Pale of Settlement. So this wasn't good for Henry. He's not controlling all of Ireland. Cromwell's answer? Start to increase and set up a permanent military force in the Pale of Settlement. Now he doesn't do it all, but it's the start of trying to increase Henry's control of Ireland. Another area, Wales. Also at times quite lawless, tough terrain, different laws, different language. That's not going to be good for Henry VIII. Cromwell, time to sort it out. Cromwell's answer, 1536, the Act of Union, which was basically almost like England taking over Wales. England was introduced as the official language. English law was introduced. Wales for, was sending now 26 MPs to the Parliament in London. Justices of peace were used to try and set up control in Wales. Cromwell establishing royal control. It's part of his job. So Ireland begins sorts out Wales, the other area, the north of England. Now the north of England, hmm, possible trouble here. The Council of the North, based in York, looking after land from roughly about the River Trent, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, all the way up through Yorkshire, Lancashire, right up to the border with Scotland. That's the area which is being ruled by this Council of the North. Nobles, clergymen, it's up to them to keep law and order for the crown. But there are problems. Yes, there are. Many of these nobles and the clergy were Catholics and they were upset with King Henry because one of the things he'd started to do was the dissolution of the monasteries. We'll look at it in a later video. They saw this as an attack on the Catholic Church. So therefore, they're not going to do much to help Henry get control, get law and order settled. So when there is a, a later, quite a major rebellion against Henry's control called the Pilgrimage of Grace. Don't worry, we'll look at it in another video. Many of those nobles did not do much to stop it. So Henry is losing control in the north. Cromwell, time for you to find an answer. What was it? Cromwell reorganised the council. He says, you've got to meet permanently. At the council, you are now responsible for dealing with law and order. He's making everything more organised. He's making it more efficient and therefore law and order, Henry's control will be established. The power of King Henry. Now, another area. I mentioned money. If only, if only they were £500. Put my monopoly money away. Now, what about the area of financial reforms, financial change? Taxes, of course, are hugely important. The Kinks. Have you ever heard the Kinks? Great band. The tax man's taken all my dough. Apologies for the terrible singing. But taxes are important. Why? 
It allowed Henry to run his court. Magnificent, showing off. I'm King Henry, I'm very powerful. The taxes also provide for the defence of the country. A fear of attack from Catholic countries because of Henry's changes to religion, because of the desire to get the marriage to Catherine of Aragon annulled. So there was a fear of invasion. So money was needed to protect the country. Cromwell again, he knew the system needed change. He knew it needed reform because in the old way, it was the officials in the king's chamber who were in charge of running the money. Henry VIII didn't get involved. He's bored by all of that routine. Nothing to do with me. I'm not going to do that. My officials will look after it. But again, it's disorganised. There's no rules written down. No formal system of checking the accounts. So they didn't really know who was paying what. It's amateurish, ladies and gentlemen. The dissolution of the, of the monasteries that I mentioned earlier. Don't worry, video coming on that. It led to a huge increase in money for the, the crown. £100,000 up to £240,000. Well, in the old system, the king's chamber, these officials, if you like, they were just overwhelmed. They could not deal with the increase in the workload. So Cromwell yet again has to provide an answer. He has to reform and change the financial system. And how does he do that? Simple. He sets up new government departments taking power away from the old system of the king's chamber. Two new departments in particular. The first one, 1536, the Court of Augmentation. And it deals with all the money, all the property taken from the dissolution of the monasteries. The second department, great name, the government of first government sorry the court of first fruits and tenths tenths is from the old english word tithe they pay a tenth of their money in tax first fruits and tenths this dealt with money taxes from the clergy from the priests now previously under the old system that had gone to the pope but now england is breaking with rome that will be stopped so the money can go to the crown. So Cromwell sets up a new system to deal with this new money. You could argue what he's really doing here, Cromwell, is introducing offices, paperwork, modern bureaucracy. The officials are being better trained. They're checking, they're monitoring, they're agreeing rules, they're agreeing procedures. It's all becoming more efficient and effective. Final thing on the money. Sometimes land would be sold to the nobles. Extra money for the crown. If that noble died and his heir was a child and therefore couldn't take command of the land themselves, the crown would step in and run those lands until the heir was old enough and mature enough to take control. Now, when the heir was a child, they were known as a ward, W-A-R-D. So Cromwell sets up the court of wards where the crown looks after the land. Of course, for a fee, some income went to the king. So Cromwell is streamlining organizing the money, making everything more efficient so that Henry's rule, his power, his control is better. So there we have the main key reforms of Cromwell. Let's try and sum it all up. Well, Cromwell's reforms were to do with power. P-O-W-E-R, power. That should help you try to remember it. Power. 
is being centralised in London. Ireland, Wales, the North, all centralised from London. Cromwell has improved and increased the organisation. He has set up more people to deal with these problems who are now well trained. Put those three together and he is establishing control for King Henry. And the final one, he's sorting out the money, the exchequer, sometimes called the treasury, the role of the exchequer, those courts of augmentation, etc., that I just talked about. So Cromwell is establishing power for King Henry. P-O-W-E-R. There's a way of remembering what Cromwell's reforms were all about. He was making everything more efficient. So, there's just one other area that we need to look at where Cromwell also brought in huge changes and reforms. But because that's so important, I'll put it in a separate video and I'll do that next. And that is looking at what changes Cromwell brought in Parliament. Power. That's what this one's been all about, ladies and gentlemen. Cromwell doing his job as Chief Minister, establishing the power of King Henry VIII. As ever, I hope it's been useful. I do plan them. It's not an accident. <laughs> Sorry about that. Terrible joke. I apologise. As ever, I hope it's been useful and I'll see you soon. Bye now.